Values for equilibrium constants, or KQs, have a very wide range. Here we'll discuss what the values for KQ mean and the factors that affect these values. Remember that given a chemical equation like this, where the lowercase letters stand for coefficients, the KQ expression is written like this. With the concentration of the products on top, or in the numerator, and the concentrations of the reactants on the bottom, or in the denominator. Let's say we have a particular equilibrium equation in which the products are highly favored. In other words, the reaction occurs to a large extent. We can emphasize this by representing the products C and D with large letters to indicate high concentrations, and the reactants A and B with small lettering to indicate low concentrations. The KQ expression is written like this. We can think of the KQ expression as a fraction or ratio. Because the numerator is large in this case, and the denominator is small, we can say the value of this fraction is large. This fraction is KQ, so KQ has a large value in this case. Now we'll look at an equilibrium equation in which the reactants are highly favored and the reaction occurs to a very small extent. This time the reactants have high concentrations so they're represented by big letters, and the products of low concentrations so they're represented by smaller size letters. In the KQ expression for this reaction, the products have low concentrations so the numerator of the fraction is small, and the reactants have high concentrations so the denominator is large. Because the numerator is small and the denominator is large, the value of this fraction is quite small. This fraction is equal to KQ, so the value of KQ for this reaction is small. So in summary, if products are highly favored, the ratio of product concentrations to reactant concentrations is high, and the value of KQ is large. But if reactants are favored, the ratio of product concentrations to reactant concentrations is low, and the value of KQ is small. So we can say the higher the value of KQ for a particular reaction, the greater the extent of the reaction, or the closer the reaction is to completion. For example, the dissociation of CUS solid into its aqueous ions at 25 degrees has a KQ value of 6 times 10 to the negative 37th, which is extremely small. So we know that at 25 degrees, this reaction occurs to an extremely small extent. In another example, we'll consider the reaction of zinc and cyanide ions to form the complex ZnCn4-. At 25 degrees, the KQ value for this reaction is 1 times 10 to the 19th. This is a very large value, which means this reaction occurs to a very large extent. You may have noticed that when values for KQs are given, the temperature is always specified. This is because for any particular reaction, the temperature affects the value of KQ. Let's say we have an endothermic reaction. XY plus heat gives X plus Y. And the KQ expression is the concentration of X times the concentration of Y over the concentration of XY. Now we'll increase the temperature will show that heat has been added as a stress. In order to counteract this stress, the equilibrium will shift to the right. We'll just show the equation this time as it shifts to the right. The concentrations of products increase and the concentration of the reactant decreases. Now we'll repeat the shift to the right, but this time we'll focus on the KQ and its expression. As it shifts to the right, we see that the numerator increases, the denominator decreases, and the ratio, or the value of KQ, increases. So we'll summarize by stating that if we increase the temperature of an endothermic reaction, the equilibrium will shift to the right, and the value of KQ will increase. We can reason that if we decrease the temperature of an endothermic reaction, the equilibrium will shift to the left, toward the heat term, and the ratio of products to reactants, and the value of KQ, will decrease. Now we'll look at an exothermic reaction. Here's an exothermic reaction, A plus B gives AB plus heat. 
will increase the temperature of this exothermic reaction and show that heat has been added as a stress. We'll concentrate on just the equation first. As it shifts to the left, the concentrations of the reactants increase and the concentration of the product decreases while excess heat is used up. Now we'll repeat the shift, this time focusing on the KQ expression and the value. As it shifts to the left, the ratio of concentrations of products to reactants decreases and the value of KQ decreases. So if we increase the temperature of an exothermic reaction, the equilibrium will shift to the left, away from the heat term, and the ratio of products to reactants and the value of KQ will both decrease. We can reason that if we decrease the temperature of an exothermic reaction, the equilibrium will shift to the right toward the heat term, and the ratio of products to reactants and the value of KQ will both increase. It's very important to remember that if the equation for an equilibrium reaction stays the same, the only stress that we can impose that will change the value of KQ is a change in temperature. But what if we do change an equilibrium equation by reversing it, doubling it, or some other change? Let's see what happens to the value of KQ when an equation is reversed. Let's consider a simple equilibrium equation, A plus B gives AB, at a temperature of 25 degrees. The equilibrium constant expression is the concentration of AB over the concentration of A times the concentration of B. Let's say the value of the equilibrium constant for this reaction at 25 degrees is 5.0. 5.0 is the same as 5.0 over 1. Now we'll reverse this reaction. Now A, B is on the left and A plus B are on the right. This means the concentrations of A and B should be on top and the concentration of A, B should be on the bottom. So we flip the ratio like this. So it becomes the reciprocal, the concentration of A times the concentration of B over the concentration of AB. Now we'll repeat the flip, but this time showing the KQ value. When we flip the ratio, we also flip the 5 over 1 to get its reciprocal 1 over 5, which can also be written as 0.2. So when we have an equilibrium equation with its KQ, and we reverse it, the new KEQ is the reciprocal of the old KEQ. Let's see what happens to the value of KEQ when an equation is doubled. Again, we'll start with the equilibrium equation A plus B gives AB at a temperature of 25 degrees. Its KEQ expression is the concentration of AB over the concentration of A times the concentration of B. And we'll say the value of KEQ at 25 degrees is 5.0. Now we'll double this equation by writing a coefficient 2 in front of each species. The KQ expression for the original equilibrium equation is this, and its value is 5. We double the equation by writing the coefficient 2 in front of all species. These coefficients become exponents in the KQ expression for this new equation. Because every concentration is squared, this expression is the same as the concentration of AB over the concentration of A times the concentration of B, all squared, which is equal to 5 squared, or 25. We can summarize by stating that when we double an equation, the new KQ value is the old KQ value squared. Let's see what happens to the value of KQ when an equation is tripled. We can use the same reasoning to predict that if we triple an equation, the new KQ will be the old KQ cubed, which is 5 cubed, or 125, which rounded to two significant figures equals 130. We'll also see what happens to the value of KQ when an equation is multiplied by 1 half. If we multiply an equation by 1 half, the new KQ is the old KQ to the power 1 half, which is the same as saying the new KQ is the square root of the old KQ, or the square root of 5, which is 2.236, which rounded to two significant figures 
becomes just 2.2. We can summarize everything in a table. When the equilibrium equation is reversed, we can say the new KQ is the reciprocal of the old KQ. Or we can state the equation KEQ nu is equal to 1 over KEQ old. If the equilibrium equation is doubled, we can say that the new KQ is the old KQ squared. Or we can state the equation KEQ nu is equal to KEQ old squared. If the equilibrium equation is tripled, we can say the new KQ is the old KQ cubed. Or we can state the equation KEQ nu is equal to KEQ old cubed. Finally, if the equilibrium equation is halved, we can say the new KQ is the square root of the old KQ. Or we can state the equation KEQ nu is equal to the square root of KQ old. It is good to remember or to be able to easily derive all these relationships between an equilibrium equation and its KEQ value.